one of the things that we, I think, were really excited about in terms of my discussions with you earlier this week was the whole idea of the role that the principal plays in making sure that good is implemented in the schools. And, you know, one of the comments that we were talking about was it's not just enough for the principal to be enthusiastic or for the principal to be supportive. There has to be a lot more engagement from the principal. Can you just tell me a little bit more about how you take the leadership in that space? So, look, I've always been a person that's very hands-on and getting involved. I'm not going to just say, okay, let's do this thing and then leave it to someone else to do. So I think that's the first part. The principal needs to be willing to get involved. Um, because if you just say yes to a program and you're keen and you're excited, but your actions are not there to back up your words, then in life, in, in general, you're not going to succeed. So as the principal, I make sure that the program takes place. Because as a principal, you understand that your teachers are busy, they have a job to teach. And like I said, at our school, caring is a very big part of it. So a lot of the teachers' time is also taken up with that. So when it comes to the delivery of the program, I started by making the program a whole school program. So everybody knows this is a school program. It's not that group of teachers or Ms. Patain that's responsible for the program. It's a whole school program because tied into the mood program is that the school values need to be linked. You can't have kids in a class being taught the mood values, but then when they go to teacher X, then that teacher doesn't uh, display those kind of values. So it's important for your entire staff to understand that this is a school initiative. Then what I do is I will call the coordinator and say, look, you need to give me a date or I will give you a date if you can't choose a date. And I then create the platform for the program to be delivered. So currently what we are doing at our school is we allocate a Friday because that's normally a shorter day at most schools. So the grade eights will be taken out of the normal academic classes and they go to a venue where they're only going to do the mood program for that day. So for the, for the full, so from half past eight to half past So we do our first to half on a Friday. So from eight o'clock they, they move into the room. Then round about quarter past half past eight, they'll start with the program. Those teachers then, the mood coaches, I assign other educators to look after their classes so they can be free to run the program during that time. Because if I expect my teachers to do it after school, my kids to stay after school, it's not going to be have the same input or the same value to them because it's like, oh, now I have to give up after school. Yeah. And for the kids, I'm worried about getting home. So we make it part of the school day, and like I said in the beginning with the, the Maslow before Bloom, my teachers understand that this is an important program so that when that child ends up in the class, in grade 9, in grade 10, and eventually in grade 12, they've got these skills to deal with the pressures that come along with as you yeah. rise through the, the ranks of, of a school career, basically. So I create those days where the teachers or the coaches, the mood coaches are freed up, the grade eights are taken out of their normal classes and go, they go to a venue. So for that day, they run the program. And so in that way, for us, it was quite easy to already complete five sessions before we even reached August in the year. And before the end of August, now we'll complete the sixth session, which will be taking place on a Friday again. So, so I just want to understand. So it's not necessarily that it's every Friday, but it's... Fridays that you need to be able to complete it. And I must say congratulations to to both of you for actually having achieved that, actually staying on track with your implementation plan because it's so important. And it was so encouraging. Um, you know, the, we know that the MOOC program works. We know that it works. So to see it in mm -hmm. action in such a very positive way made so much sense. But Ms. Patain, how do you deal with the teachers who are good coaches who come back to you and say to you, listen, man, but I just have got way too much to do. I really just can't give up this Friday. You know, I've got marketing to do and I've got all those things to do. How do you as the coordinator deal with that? First of all, I must say that we have an awesome principal and with, without his support and his advice, I would be totally lost. <laughs> so I first ran to Mr. Tom to say, look, sir, this is our challenge. This is the situation or the problem. So Mr. Tommy um, gave us time, or he makes time for us to then have our meetings to plan these um, sessions. So before we have a mood um, session, we have meetings where we literally go through the manual, and I must say that is an amazing book because it guides you step by step. So we would take time, Mr. Tommy will arrange individualization during a break, 
or even sometimes we run into other periods. Um, so Mr. Tommy will make sure that the root coaches, we have people looking after our classes. So we will then discuss, we will go through the manual, we will delegate them to say, um, okay, we team up to say the two root coaches, you will work together, the other two will work together, and then we will decide you are responsible for the music. There's a lot of planning going into a session, so you can't just rock up into it. Okay. Otherwise, you are not going to um, achieve success in at the end of the program. So if you need to state the objectives from the start, and you need to plan. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that um, with Mr. Tommy's guidance and his assistance, because it is hectic teaching and running all of these programs, um, but we need time, we need time, and Mr. Tommy provides a platform for us to actually take time in the school day to plan and to get everything ready. Yeah. And I think that becomes that important commitment that a good coach makes, because it's almost like a shoulder to the wheel thing. You can't put your shoulder to the wheel and then halfway through it decide this is not what you want to do. So it does take extra time. It does take commitment. But I think with the support of the principal, like sort of etching out that time that you need to do what you need to do, knowing that your learners are taken care of, you know, they're not sort of running down the halls in like mm -hmm. crazy mode. Yeah. You know that they're taken care of. You know that their academic progress continues. But you also prepare to actually offer them a product that's going to make them better people yes. as well, more well-rounded and a holistic kind of person. So that's very exciting. Can I just add, so like I said, um, if you just left the coordinator with, who's a normal educator, they normally in a school don't have the authority to instruct another educator to do something. So if it was just up to Ms. Fertain as the coordinator and said, come guys, I want to meet with you, they'll say, no, I'm too busy, I must mark, I've got this to yeah. do and I've got that to do. But when your principal delegates a responsibility to you, you have to fulfill that duty. Um, because you can then you know, be taken to task if you choose not to. Um, so that's why I say it's very important for the principal to lead the program. To say, right educators, we're going to do this on Friday. And you're going to have to, because it's not just the mood coaches, it's the other educators who have to then give up their time to look after a class that they don't normally teach. So that's why if it's a whole school program and the principal is directing the activities, then no one is going to say, but I'm too busy. Yeah. Yeah. They so, understand that it's part of what needs to be so, done at the school. So that whole notion of the whole school, even though you're not necessarily a good coach, you have to continue to support this program as mm -hmm. well. But then you also see, even though you're not a good coach, you see the benefit yeah. of that program yeah. because that, that learner comes into your class yeah. understanding the courage to care, the courage to live, the courage to say no. So, yeah, I think, you know, for me, daily, having this conversation is so valuable because it almost becomes a confirmation of what then is best practice, that it's not just about the principal supporting, not just about delegation, not just about this little select group of people, but it's actually a full school program. It's delegating and supporting, it's comforting, it's caring, it's doing all the things that we talk about to make sure that the programs improve.